Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining my session uh, today on transforming your meter room uh, to Microsoft Teams enabled rooms. And today I'm going to take you through a journey on uh, what you can do in your meter room, how um, meeting room spaces have evolved. Um, so it's not just a conference room anymore. People are working uh, remotely, flexible, different style rooms. And obviously we know today uh, a lot of us are working from home uh, due to COVID-19. So it's actually using the technology uh, even more. And then we're going to run through some you know, types of meeting spaces. So whether you have this personal area of a desk or cubicle, um, you have large spaces, huddle spaces, um, and existing equipment. How do you bring that into a Teams meeting? And then finally, we'll talk about how we manage those devices. So um, we will, uh, these slides are clickable. So when you look at them afterwards, you'll be able to go to a, a particular section there. So just a quick uh, overview about myself. Uh, I've been in IT all my life. Uh, I wasn't nearly an accountant. Thankfully, I, I didn't do. Um, so I've worked with everything from uh, Notes, Novell, Exchange, Citrix, everything. Uh, and also different areas of uh, organizations. So actually end user and right up to a vendor as well. So I've had uh, everything thrown at me uh, in every different uh, shape and guise. And currently I'm at um, Question Electronics. Uh, so we're actually a, an MTR vendor. Um, so I'm working here across EMEA, uh, across our uh, portfolio for, for Microsoft. And you can find me and some articles at my blog, uh, graham-walsh.com, and on Twitter and on LinkedIn, follow me and uh, I post a lot of stuff, a lot of how-to articles on, on MTRs uh, as well. And you'll find lots of history on, on uh, CVI as well, as I used to work for a CVI partner. Again, if you've got any questions, put them in the chat. I've got a chat uh, window on the, the other screen, so I'll be able to see them coming through and hopefully be able to answer those questions as well. So what we've seen uh, in the last uh, five years, or well, even longer, is that meeting rooms and meeting uses are changing. Uh, not everyone has a traditional conference room anymore. You don't always meet in the same place. Or you're meeting remotely like we are today. Everything's online uh, with the power of teams who are able to do this. So you need to try and cater for all these sort of spaces. And are they just one-to-one -one meetings or are they collaborative meetings? And this has been the challenge for uh, every organization is how do you equip these rooms with the right technology and make it simple for users? So what we're seeing uh, in the workplace is that everyone's got a different different requirement. No one, no two spaces probably are the same. Uh, real estate is getting uh, expensive as well. So people are working remotely. And been able to use tools like Microsoft Teams, it helps us collaborate, you know, things like the Microsoft Whiteboard, sharing documents. We're all able to now use these tools. All the documents are stored online and it's very easy to co-author and annotate. If you've got something like a Surface or an iPad Pro, you can use the whiteboarding features as well. And we have to think about everyone in the workplace, not just new young people, but also the other generation that have been around a while. So studies have shown that there's actually three, and maybe even four coming up soon, that are generations in the workplace. Uh, so you've got very experienced people who might be afraid of technology. And then the younger generations who ooze technology and devices and how they collaborate. And again, everything needs to be catered uh, for each one of these users. So everything is consistent. And there's a consistent experience across everything. So a lot of organizations are calling it their digital work uh, place strategy or intelligent workplace. Um, and it's all about making everyone feel inclusive so that no one's left out. Um, so again, with the power of teams, we can all be on a video meeting. We can all chat together as if we're um, remote uh, or in the office, have a daily catch up, for example, uh, working remotely uh, in these times rather than going to the office every morning at our, uh, our UK team has a coffee hour, 9, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, and we don't discuss work. We just talk about the water cooler uh, and what's happening. And we do fun quizzes. We dress up and bring baby photos and things. So it's about making everyone inclusive uh, and engaging with everyone. And this is what Microsoft Teams allows us to do. 
Um, and again, how we work. You know, work as a, a common thing going around for a long time. Work is something you do, not where you go uh, for a lot of people. Um, you know, you can work from a coffee shop, or you could. Uh, you work from home, uh, you work from another, another location. And it's not all about the fixed area anymore. And again, it's having the right tools and devices to help that change, that you can have a good quality call uh, and have a good experience and stop this, can you hear me, is the dog barking, etc. Uh, having good tools and you know, good software like Teams to be able to do all this. And make it simple um, and not just have siloed that, you know, oh, only floor 10 has video, no one else can use video in the organization. The, the cost of video has come right down. Um, so if you look at traditionally, video conferencing rooms have been very expensive. So the cost of uh, rooms for Microsoft Teams have fallen dramatically compared to what they were. Uh, so again, giving access to, to video for, for everyone. And if we look at a typical office plan layout, um, you'll see there is plenty of devices and technology in all these different spaces. And no two spaces may be the same, apart from everyone's desk, um, but there's lots of different rooms, displays, digital signage, uh, you know, video walls and reception, and you know how to bring all that together so it's consistent and then everyone has the same look and feel uh, in every sort of where they go. And again, consistent branding. So everyone has the same uh, iconography and everything else and the same message, whether it's one building or 10 buildings or 100 buildings around the world, it's everywhere and it's consistent. So for users, you know, you could be working from anywhere, whether it's mobile, uh, on, your, on your phone, on your tablet, laptop, working from home or in a conference room. You want it to be everyone to have a simple experience and it's consistent. So no one's left out. Everyone's got the same look and feel. And, um, you know, when we look at the conference room, how do we, again, conference rooms that no two are the same. Everyone is different. And what they do in London might be different to what they do in Amsterdam, to what they do in New York or to Australia, everything needs to be consistent for that user experience, especially if you travel between your organizations, you don't want to have to find out how to learn how to start a meeting in another country. You just wanna walk in and start your meeting. So you can identify these different workspaces. So the traditional conference room, uh, whether it's a U-shape, um, a curve, the bowling alley, um, huddle space, um, you know, we have these all different size rooms that want to have video enabled or a collaborative technology uh, inside these rooms. And again, open spaces like, you know, the, the water cooler moment, you know, are these brainstorming ideas? And I'll talk about, you know, what sort of devices do you put in these spaces? Uh, and then obviously private offices um, where you have one-to-ones maybe again, how do you video enable these? Are they for a shared device or a personal device? And then finally, the larger rooms, so the training rooms, the auditoriums, the, 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 the restaurants or cafeterias. How do you make them video enabled for all your all hands calls as well and make it consistent? So at any point in the day, you could be in one of these rooms. And if we look at our room journey throughout the day, we might start off at our desk and then we find that we actually need to go and uh, next meeting is in a a quick all hands, everyone needs to get together. And again, you're walking into a different environment. The key here is to have consistency uh, across all these different rooms. And then you move into your 10 a.m. normal meeting. Again, different, um, different room, different technology, but you want that uh, consistency in the software. And then again, different rooms, different meetings, you might be doing training in the afternoon. But again, if it's online, you're including people uh, remotely, what you want to be able to do is ensure that when you walk in that room, you click a button and you're able to join that meeting. So first up is many organizations have some video or an element of video technology. They may have a traditional, what Microsoft called VTCs or video teleconferencing systems. And these could be from vendors such as Polycom, Cisco, Camberg, LifeSize, etc and these devices obviously we want to make them inclusive uh, into your teams meeting so as your first journey is how do we get the existing technology into into the meetings into our teams meetings so 
we can do Teams meetings from our uh, laptops, tablets, uh, and uh, et cetera, and desktop machines. But how do we utilize the existing conference rooms uh, for a minimal, uh, say, investment? So what is Cloud Video Interop? Um, Microsoft developed this uh, throughout um, 2016, 2017. And it enables what they call, or what we call, standards-based SIP and H323 video to join a Teams meeting, as if they were a native Microsoft device. And what does that mean? Well, it allows you to um, either uh, click to join or dial a SIP address or an IP address and join that meeting. And currently, there are three certified vendors for this uh, solution. Uh, the first one is BlueJeans. You can buy it from them as a service. And again, your Standard based video endpoint will dial through the Blue Gene service and then into your Teams meeting. Uh, next up, you have Pexip, and they have two flavors. One is their cloud service. So, again, route it through the uh, cloud and then it goes into your Teams meeting. They also have a, a self hosted uh, version as well. So, you can actually host it in your own Azure uh, subscription or even on your own network. Uh, so, again, some companies who have lots and lots of video, you know, thousands of traditional systems want to keep as much traffic on net and then route it to the cloud uh, when necessary. And then finally, you have Poly or Polycom with their uh, Real Connect. So they have the interop service again, host it in their cloud in, in Azure. All three services are, are in Azure. Um, and again, route, route the calls into your uh, network. So finally, announced at Ignite uh, back in November was another CVI vendor that will come to the table, and that is Cisco. So Cisco will uh, be building their CVI infrastructure, again, hosted in uh, Microsoft Azure, and again, allow uh, your Cisco room systems uh, to dial into uh, your Microsoft Teams meetings. So that's not available yet, not in preview yet. Um, it will be coming uh, later this, this year. There's no time frame on that one. So what do you get from CVI? Um, well, first of all, you get the capability to dial into your meeting. It's not to dial out, um, it's to take that video conferencing system and dial into the, the Microsoft Teams meeting. Whether it's manual or it's a click to join experience, uh, it gives you voice. So again, you can connect with a voice only connection. Uh, video up to 1080p, that is what Teams supports today um, on the Teams platform, depending on your policy. Uh, and then content sharing. So when you walk into that meeting room, that uh, VTC system and plug in a cable, um, you are then doing video based screen sharing. And that then sends it into the Teams meeting as it would as normal. Um, and another feature from some of the vendors is that you can dedicate some devices to be trusted, i.e. if they're internal or coming from a certain uh, border controller, you can make them trusted. So they go into the Teams meeting as if you're an authenticated user. And then anyone external can be placed into the lobby, so they have to be admitted through the Teams client. Uh, and that's a feature from some of the vendors available. And then finally, you're able to control and see all these devices as part of a Teams meeting. So it will show the display name of that device. And then obviously from the Teams client, you can control that roster list, remove someone. And if you're doing things like recording, it records that stream as well. The vendors also have the video record icon appearing in a corner or a side to show that Microsoft Teams is recording this call. So again, everyone is inclusive, everyone is being recorded. So how do you start this meeting? How do you get a VTC uh, into, a, into a meeting? Well, simply you create a new meeting invite, and this can be from any device. So for example, here um, in my uh, Outlook Web Access, I've created a new Teams meeting and made it um, a Teams meeting. And obviously you can invite people and obviously you can invite the resources. So if they have resource mailboxes set up, then you can go into a more advanced feature. So you get some extra dial-in details. So if you have telephony, that's first. And then if you have CVI, you then get conferencing details on how to dial in. So as a uh, external user, you've sent this out to people, they can choose what to dial in with. So they can look at the, um, the SIP URI or dial a conference ID, um, or what you're able to do is actually click on alternate dialing instructions, and then that will give you different methods. Uh, so number app domain um, and etc., or IP address dialing, if that's your preferred method. So clicking on that, that link will take you to a uh, another page, 
and that will tell you instructions on how to join. So for a user uh, creating the meeting, they don't have to do anything. They just simply create a new Teams meeting and everyone's inclusive. And when you set up Cloud Video Interop, uh, you can define uh, that everyone gets the policy, uh, so everyone's inclusive, uh, or you define groups of people that will have this in their, in their signature automatically. Uh, so that's done in the uh, Skype for Business Online PowerShell to configure this uh, settings. And again, you can use your own domain or you can use the, the, the services domain. So what does it look like? Um, so walking up to a VTC, um, you send that meeting invite and it has a join button for this example is a Cisco system and it's then joining the team meeting. So it's very simple for users to schedule a room, walk in and join the meeting. If it's an ad hoc meeting, they can just type in the conference ID. So uh, back here where you had the conference ID, uh, they just type in the number, the nine to 11 digit number, and then they join the meeting um, as a trusted user if it's inside the network. Other, other users sometimes put the speed dial in. So Teams meeting as a speed dial, and then they enter the conference ID. Uh, so there's several different ways you can join the meeting by entering it manually, dialing into the lobby, uh, and then entering your conference ID, um, or click to join, or one button to push, whatever you want to call that mechanism. Um, so that is the uh, CDI, and that's available uh, as a sub subscription service from all, all three vendors, and then obviously Cisco uh, later on this year. Let me move on to, okay, so we have uh, our desks uh, or cubes, uh, or your even home uh, systems, what do you want to do on here? Do you still want to use a physical device on the desk? You don't like headsets. Um, you know, I use a speaker puck because I'm on calls a lot, most of the time, so I don't use a headset. Um, but I also have a, a phone that if I need to take a private call, I can pick up the handset because when I work from home, my kids can be loud sometimes. So it's nice to have um, a handset in your hand so nothing can be heard in the background. So what Microsoft have done is built uh, a platform, but it's based on uh, Android, and it's for uh, uh, certified devices, and there's quite a few available out there. Um, but if you've got existing phones, um, there is a 3PIP gateway, um, and that's valid till uh, 2023. And I saw a post from Ilya Buchenstein uh, last week, actually, that they're investigating that on how do they extend that a bit further or look at other ways of doing that. Uh, so you don't have to rip and replace all your handsets. But the idea with a Teams phone or a device is that it's a consistent user experience. So some examples we have here for devices um, is the um, Poly Alara, where you dock your, your phone. It's got a Teams button on there, so you can instantly start your meetings. So whether this is a personal device or a shared device, it could be in a you know, hot desking area because you're bringing your own device, it's pairing with it, it's also got wireless charging. You can then have obviously dedicated devices that only run the team software, um, such as audio codes, uh, Crestron, uh, Poly have their new CCX range of devices and a multiple different uh, array of CCX uh, devices. Uh, and also Yealink have devices available too. So there's lots of options depending on the sort of style or requirement for your, your space. Uh, one thing I'm seeing a lot of is that uh, people are not really doing many uh, desk phones. They're moving towards a sort of Agile working with headsets, certified headsets, of course, uh, that are available. But these can be for, you know, uh, hot desking areas um, where you're on your desk. Um, and a new uh, category uh, was sort of launched from uh, Microsoft again back at, um, I think it was Ignite. And this is the Lenovo ThinkSmart uh, device. So it's a, it's a small um, device running Android, and it's a list price of $349, and then the headset is an optional $100. Um, so it's video enabled, and it can be used in portrait or landscape. Um, eight inch touchscreen, and um, it uses power, but also then uh, for the, to power it up, and then Wi-Fi to connect to the network. And obviously then has Bluetooth built in for the, the headphones. Um, physical privacy shutter on there, as a mute button as well, physical. Uh, so it's, it's a nice style device and, um, you know, it can be used in different modes and it's more of a companion, I think. Uh, so if you'd like to have your desktop or your laptop as your main device, 
um, you could have this as your dedicated voice device. So rather than going for the traditional video phone, this is a pure soft phone, really, with a, a hardware camera. And um, it's going to ship, I think, very, very soon. If not, it's already uh, shipping. Um, so it's a, it's a nice device for, for uh, I think, for personal spaces or for, you know, huddle areas that you want to have this, um, you know, maybe two people sit around. And, and it's quite a small screen, so it's not massive. It's not, a, you know, if you look at a, a 27 inch screen like the, the Cisco WebEx Pro, for example, that execs have. Um, it's a very small device, more of a, a video phone. And anyone who may have, um, I won't say that name, that uh, big shipping company that also does videos and uh, online stuff, uh, you know, have a, a version of a show so you can see who's at the door. Yeah, it's, a, it's a nice personal device. Um, again, also, have, um, uh, there's another search engine that have this device as well for your home as this device category, I think, is becoming more and more popular. Um, so I think this is the first one, and I think we'll see more um, maybe throughout the year as other vendors may be signing up and uh, producing this category. Uh, it's certainly an interesting um, device. It'd be great to get people's feedback on what they sort of think on, on this. So if we look at this huddle space, um, what is a huddle space? Um, is it uh, you know a shared area uh, that everyone um, you know has a shared login? Uh, it's a resource account. Um, it's not a personal area. It's you know a drop-in area, and it can be used for multiple ways. You know some people may want to look at it as a scheduled. You book that huddle space out or that booth, uh, or is it you walk up and you take that place? Um, I've seen some organisations will put maybe a 30-minute limit on huddle spaces or booth areas. There's lots of creative designs I've seen in, in offices that people are doing now. And you know, do, in this uh, huddle space, do you want audio or video? So. Again, if you're looking at the audio only option uh, for a huddle space, um, again, this could be for a conference room as well. There are a couple of different options. So um, Crestron and Poly and Yaling all have conference phones that are certified for uh, Microsoft Teams. They're on the Teams Android software on there and they can be the conference phone for that room or that huddle space. So people who like traditional uh, audio only devices, um, these devices are available for these spaces. And um, also coming out very shortly, uh, that Crestron announced at uh, ISE back in February is a new version, that's uh, a, a smaller version. So again, for that small huddle space where you want to do an audio only conference phone. So that'll be uh, available later this year. And then if you want to video enable uh, the room, so what you do with this huddle space? So again, uh, back at Ignite in uh, November 2019, Microsoft announced a new collaboration bar category. So the first out of the block um, are Yaylink. So theirs is now shipping, as announced, I think, last week. It's a small device that sits on top of a screen. So they provide the um, camera or the codec at the top and also the, the speaker puck uh, that has the dedicated Bluetooth uh, connection to the device. And it also has that Teams button, as you can see on the front. So you're able to start your meeting uh, that's scheduled on there. And then also Poly announced as well uh, their X30, and they also have an X50, which is slightly bigger. And again, with a touch panel as an option, uh, these can be linked to a touch screen. So imagine in a huddle space, maybe a, a 32 inch or 40 inch touch screen, and that can be used to drive the meeting. If you use it on a personal device, then obviously a smaller, um, you know, 27 inch or 32 inch screen uh, could be utilized for these devices. Um, so the idea is that it's an all in one, very easy to set up. Um, Yaling, for example, is PoE, so it connects over the network. The Poly, uh, when looking at the specs, requires the power supply to that. Um, Yaling can ship with a remote control uh, as an option as well, so a physical remote control. Um, whereas the Poly has the option of their, their touch panel, um, Trio, or again, you drive it from a connected touch screen. So that's a USB tethered. Uh, these devices, again, are based on Android. Uh, they run Android 9. And again, they, they are limited to 720p in video quality. It's designed for that smaller space. It's not designed for the, the conference room. And I've got a comparison later on uh, talking about the, the other ones. Um, and then collaboration space, so that maybe this is the water cooler um, or you want the ability to uh, annotate and ink. Uh, so we have the Surface Hub 2 uh, that's available now. 
And again, I've seen uh, some organizations have these lined up in a corridor. So you go and take one of the ones available, bring it into your meeting room and collaborate and use that as your uh, audio, video and collaboration device. Um, and, uh, and the bottom tray there, that uh, has the ability to have a battery pack as well. So it can be powered and moved around and not interrupted. Um, if you need to move rooms, you'll stay on the call. There's also this category of the Windows collaboration display um, available from Sharp and Avicore that are going to be shipping soon, I believe. Uh, and again, it's using a Windows 10 uh, device, uh, the camera and uh, microphones built in, and you can tether your laptop and obviously then start your Teams call. So it's a different type of category. And um, one thing uh, that we actually saw at Ignite again <laughs> last year was the ability to take a Surface Hub into a Microsoft Teams room and make it a companion. So having your native Teams room experience, but also use your Surface Hub as your companion device to annotate in that room. And I'll talk to that in a bit. So if we look at uh, small meter rooms, and again, this is a, a category that, you know, you probably say, and I've got some room sizes as well, um, from four people upwards, uh, you know, maybe four to eight people would be a small meter room. So the cut of the vendors that are available, that have devices uh, all available shipping today, um, you have the HP Slice, and this is a um, touch panel that's connected over USB-C back to the, the Nook, and that's running Windows 10 IoT Enterprise. So all these devices now I'm talking about are running Windows 10 uh, Enterprise, and they run native Microsoft Teams Room software. And even though I keep saying Microsoft Teams Room, um, they are also enabled for Skype for Business. They still run Skype for Business in the background, so they can be running in two modes. Um, so there's actually three modes on the systems, Skype only, uh, Skype primary with Teams. So it can, when you do a new meeting, it will always be Skype. But if you receive a Teams invite, it will get that um, Teams invite and you'll be able to join it. And it can then run Teams primary with Skype for Business. So again, Teams as a primary focus, and when you do a new call, it will be looking up Teams. And again, if it receives a Skype invite, it will be able to join that uh, that that call. So um, HP, uh, they don't make uh, any cameras. Uh, same with uh, Lenovo, uh, ThinkSmart uh, Hub 500, um, all in one device. Uh, so it's the touch panel uh, has a microphone and speaker array built in, and then the computer's at the bottom. And these devices can be paired again with any certified um, camera for Microsoft Teams. So for example, you have the um, Logitech Meetup, you have the uh, Polycom uh, cameras that are available. Again, all these can be found on the uh, Team Store, which I'll share right at the end. Um, and again, different uh, partners bundle different cameras together, again, based on your, your room size. Uh, Yealink have their uh, entry level device, so again, using a compute, uh, their touch panel and their same speaker puck and their new camera, uh, again, for the small meeting spaces. Crestron have a different range of uh, options. So audio on the table uh, or audio at the front of room uh, on the soundbar in the middle. And so you get a choice of options on how uh, you want the audio coming from. What I see a lot of people is when they move from a traditional um, phone, they like audio in the middle. Um, if you're at home, you have audio from usually the front of your room, from maybe your soundbar or from your television. And so this is where it's, um, some people prefer the audio coming from the front because that's where people are speaking from. And then again, Yealink have another model um, with extra microphones that are actually uh, deck based so they can be spread across the room. And again, a better camera and soundbar uh, in that package. And then finally, we have Logitech with their tap system. Again, providing their uh, touch interface that's connected back to the Nook over USB-C and then using something like a small meetup camera um, to uh, have that huddle space. And that's where your audio speakers and microphone are, are set up. So then we move on to sort of medium rooms. Um, again, the Crestron soundbar can fit in there. The Mercury can fit in there with an extra extension microphone. And then we move into the, the Logitech uh, TAC with Rally. So with their uh, PTZ camera and their Rally speaker and one microphone pod. So again, depending on your room size, you can build the peripherals around uh, what you require. And then also with the Crestron Mercury there and also with the uh, Yealink uh, MVC range, again, having 
different microphone options available uh, to you there. Let me move on to the, the large meter rooms. So maybe this is the, the, the 14, 16 plus sort of rooms that maybe the long bowling alley. And this is where something likely where you want multiple microphones on the table, uh, multiple speakers. So maybe you want stereo, so you want one either side of the screen and uh, it has a larger reach. And then obviously using the Logitech right sense, you're able to uh, you know, face track and find people. Again, another example, you can have the uh, Lenovo Hub 500 bundle that with the Rally, uh, a Rally Plus, um, which is the, the multiple modules. So again, you can pick and choose your components and build a room based on the technology. So for example, if you use uh, Lenovo in your Australia office, but in uh, Europe you use HP, you can mix and match. Remember the interface is gonna be exactly the same with the Teams room. It's all the same on every device. Um, and then again, build a HP slice for the Poly Trio. So again, using the Polycom uh, camera, the Eagle Eye uh, USB connected camera and the Trio with extension mics, you can build out a large room solution um, with that. Again, the same with uh, Crestron, put in the Mercury with extension mics, you're able to, to do that as well. And then going even further, Crestron with Logitech, which was announced back in February, partnership there, utilizing uh, the Crestron touch control, but with the Logitech Rally uh, or Rally Plus uh, solutions. And how do you treat these complex rooms? So this has been one of the challenges that a lot of people have been uh, talking about is how do you address these large auditoriums or large complex rooms? So one of the features that um, uh, Crestron have is the ability to integrate with their core control platform for um, devices. So whether you're operating the blinds, the audio, the lighting, uh, the, the air conditioning, uh, you're able to have what they call a page flip button. Uh, Yaling also have this for their um, PTZ control. So in the bottom, uh, right hand corner, you get a, this little control slider. Uh, I remember seeing some feedback on the tech community. Uh, someone said, well, can you put the label room control uh, under there? So it's under consideration from Microsoft, to, you know, whether they add that. And then when you press that button, you get into the room control. So whether it's setting up a, a macro that's already done, for example, on the top left, you have online meeting. It will then lower the, the shades and lower the lighting or adjust it however what the the preference is so they just walk in the room hit the button and then join the meeting so other options are obviously manual control so they can turn all the lights on or off um, or again in the large space if you've got a divisible room so you've got two rooms that you sometimes convert into one large room again you'd use the page flip to control which audio sources would be presenting uh, into the meeting so for installed audio for those large complex rooms or where you don't want anything on the uh, um, you know uh, table. So first option actually is a tabletop mic uh, from Shure, which is now certified for, for Teams. So their DSP, their digital sound processor for handling the audio and the um, audio puck. Um, these, again, I've seen some nice versions of these deployed and they've been countersunk into the table. There's a, a module you can do there. And then if you want to go fully, uh, you know, take everything away from the table because maybe you do move the tables around, you have the Shure ceiling tile. And again, I've seen these in action at some uh, client sites and they're very, very impressive on, on their pickup of audio just from a single ceiling tile. And then also you have the uh, Biamp uh, DSP here with the Sennheiser Team Connect uh, ceiling tile as well. So a couple of different options and um, what you can do. So if you look at the top end range of a, an amplifier with the speakers and the um, ceiling tile, um, if you look on the Microsoft uh, store, um, that's list price of nearly $10,000 um, of what they sell it for. So different options for different rooms. Um, and then you can build into what cameras you want. So for example, maybe a Polycom Eagle Eye Director. Uh, so it's face tracking, so no one has to touch anything. Um, so again, completely clear desk and no remotes. Everything can be automated in a room. So it gives you some options there. So here's some examples of what uh, we've seen um, some meeting rooms set up. Um, so here's a system that's connected uh, all on the wall. So the huddle space is free to walk around. Uh, and actually that's paired with a, a Dell touchscreen into the Microsoft Teams room. So you're able to annotate. Uh, so as long as someone starts the meeting um, from the Teams client and starts the whiteboard, then you can start annotating on a touchscreen that's connected. So any USB uh, connected touchscreen uh, to the, the MTR, MTR device, you can then annotate as part of that meeting. 
again, that feature will be coming to um, the Teams room, so you can actually launch it from the console as well. And then again, this is another option, uh, whether you're using a short throw projector, but with a sound bar and a tabletop uh, control panel, as you can see, you can mix and match how rooms look, uh, look and feel, um, but also, um, you know, deploy this system, for example, uh, replaced a traditional VTC and they kept the existing screens and then retrofitted um, the MTR behind uh, the scene there. Large rooms, as you can see here, using polycom um, and speakers and, and ceiling microphones. So you can actually do any sort of large space uh, you want with an MTR. You're not limited just to a small space where it's a PC in a room. It's a lot more than that. Um, using all the uh, certified peripherals, you can build out any size room uh, you want. And again, if you look at complex spaces, so like a training room, uh, you're able to fit that out as well. Whatever projector you have, touch panels on, on the wall out of the way, so everything's hidden behind the cabinet or the compute, uh, and then cameras um, can be uh, linked wherever you want. Um, again, you can go as far as having like radio microphones as well. Large room, multiple controllers, so um, again, using different style peripherals. There's um, you know, ceiling speakers in this room, for example. And so you can build any room any way you want, and, but use the MTR technology. So you have that consistent experience, whichever meeting space you go into. So Microsoft have a guidance of some sort of room sizes. Uh, you, might, you might agree with these, you may not. Uh, this is what Microsoft uh, shared with us in terms of sort of different room sizes and what they classify for each device. So when you go on the uh, Microsoft uh, aka.ms forward slash Teams devices, you'll see the sort of rooms um, sort of uh, covered in these sort of topics. Um, but again, every room is different. Acoustics is a very important part to play um, when you're doing audio. So what works in one room may not work in another room. So just a quick look at the collaboration bars. Um, so they are running uh, Android versus MTRs, which, which run Windows 10. Uh, they're only for single screen. And actually in the notes, when you look at these um, uh, slides afterwards, uh, put some notes in there about the number of screens um, that Ilya actually shared on, on LinkedIn with someone the other day, saying it's a lot of technical reasons, Android and multiple screens. Um, it's a lot of uh, processing required there. And as you can see, the visit video resolution on collab bars are 720p compared to MTRs, which are 1080p today. And probably a key one for migrations, well, Martin was just talking about, you know, the Skype migration. You can't use a collaboration bar with a Skype for Business account. It must be a Teams-enabled account. Um, so again, consistency. So as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, pair the collaboration bar with a touch screen, so you can start inking and annotating in that area there. Uh, another feature is obviously the whiteboard or magic whiteboard that you would have seen probably last year at Enterprise Connect. Um, again, that's available for MTRs, not in for uh, collaboration bars. And probably the other key one here really is content. You have to share content from your personal device. So whether it's your laptop, iPad or phone, you have to use that to share content. There's no physical cable connection uh, on collaboration bars. You do have the new uh, proximity join, which is a nice feature. So it will find your room and say, do you want to add that to the meeting? which is a nice feature that's on both platforms, um, but it won't get the new guest join feature of Zoom and WebEx, third party uh, WebRTC joining. That's reserved for MTRs only. Um, and then what we have coming soon, Microsoft announced this um, again back at Ignite and did a demo. There's a, a video overview on my blog um, from it, um, but being able to join third party meetings at a click of a button. So it's gonna interpret the URL, and launch a WebRTC client in the background and then show it on the right screen or multiple screens if you've got two in the room and be able to share that. Um, and then obviously for Zoom and WebEx, they're the first two partners they announced and obviously they may do some more as well. And also uh, being asked quite a lot is modern authentication. That's coming uh, through. Uh, and I mentioned earlier, start and stop recording and start whiteboarding. There are some other features that they mentioned at, at Ignite. Just quickly on to how to manage these devices. Uh, so again, announced at uh, Ignite last year, um, Teams rooms will be able to be controlled and uh, looked after in the um, Teams admin center. And also collaboration bars will be as well, just like you've been able to do your phone devices uh, uh, for the past uh, while. 
So again, you can look at the call stats, drill down, see when the calls were good, were they bad? Um, and again, it's like, like looking at a user call quality. You're seeing exactly the same information and seeing exactly how good the call was uh, during that session. And then moving, moving on to vendors, you have Crestron who have their XIO platform, uh, which is hosted in Microsoft Azure and the IoT hub. And you can see the status of devices, reboot them, provision them, so get them online or get them ready even before they go out to your, your office to be plugged in, uh, control the firmware uh, and set up alerting. And also here, uh, you're able to remote control, as you can see on the image. So you've got full control over the touch panel, so you can assist people remotely. You don't have to go to the room, you can log into the, the XIO cloud and see the status of the panel and help that user through if they're saying, I don't see my meeting. So you can log in and say, well, you haven't invited it uh, to the room. Um, and again, API integration to your service desk, maybe if you want to set those alerts up to go to another system. Uh, and reporting is based on Power BI. It's all hosted in, in the Microsoft stack. So you can start seeing utilization reports and things like people counting from, from rooms. Uh, Logitech have their platform called Sync, uh, and it's able to see the devices, so the USB peripherals, so the Meetup and the Rally, for example. Um, an application is, stored in, is installed on the PC, it's signed in, it talks to the, the Logitech Sync cloud and tells you if there's an error, error with any of the peripherals. Um, and you can see them um, and set up alerts, obviously if something goes wrong. You can configure that right sense auto config and push that down to the, uh, to the device. Um, and obviously control the, the software and firmware uh, from the Logitech Sync portal. Uh, and soon, um, Crestron and, and Logitech are working together to bring all that peripheral information into the XIO cloud. So you'll have a single pane of glass to go and see everything for your MTRs that are. Um, Yealink also have their management cloud. Uh, again, you sign up and put your devices in. You can see uh, the status of them. Uh, looking at all their details, all their Skype for Business phones and conference phones can be done and set up, and the Teams phones, they can be configured. Um, but uh, no mention of room systems on there yet. Um, the room system management is for uh, another platform. That's uh, Oom, I won't mention all the name, and um, maybe MTRs will come to that soon. Lenovo also have their um, Think Smart Manager, again, a very nice tool online that you Register your device with the serial number and it's login. Again, it's running an agent on the PC. And then you can start to see is it online, is it uptime, um, its serial number, what versions of software it's running. And I, you know, push out a certificate to it once it's online, how it's connected over uh, Ethernet obviously would be best for a room. And then obviously seeing any um, USB ports, you can actually disable them remotely. So there's some nice features here uh, on the Lenovo um, Manager, it's all based on the cloud, so you register for an account and add your device to it. Uh, and again, rolling back software or updating software that can be done from the console too. And again, looking at alerts or issues, and uh, that's all there. So thanks for listening. I uh, hope you found that some useful. Uh, let's just run, see if there's any questions. Uh, there was one. Uh, yeah, so again, someone mentioned the Teams devices, that's listed there. There's a tech community uh, for Teams, it's available as well. You'll see a lot of posts on the uh, Microsoft Teams blog, and then a lot when new features are released, and a lot of people comment on there. And again, feature requests for any uh, Teams rooms, uh, again, add that to the user voice for Microsoft Teams. And then finally, uh, I like to recommend sometimes if you put one device, if you're going to start rolling out, um, Microsoft Teams room is have one on the tap preview uh, for meeting room devices. That way you'll get early information and be able to see what's upcoming and actually test that before it rolls out into production. Uh, so Teams rooms roll out and get their updates from Windows Update for the OS and the Microsoft Store for the actual MTR app. So you can actually see all those features before they come and make sure it's okay and ready to roll out and whether you man manage it through Intune or SCCM as your option for managing the devices. Uh, that's able to to control that and obviously see when it's ready for for production. Um, so, da, 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 so yeah, person for a 20 person room uh, for 20 attendees. So yeah, Polycom Trio, maybe with extension mics. Um, it depends on the room, the acoustics. Um, again, Yealink and and their CP960 or the the Crestron Mercury, maybe with extension mics. Because uh, then that a large room that gives you mute, mute control. You just don't have the 
centre of room uh, where you have to go to the console or the touch panel to, to mute it. If you've got extension microphones, you can then uh, use that to mute it as well. Um, so thank you for listening. Uh, again, any questions, feel free to drop me a message on, on any of the social sites or uh, again, these videos will be posted online. We can reply to anything on there. Stay safe, stay well and uh, enjoy the rest of the day and the sessions.